other transformations that you need to project in. But it's not just one piece that. I do too. Listen, I've been super. We'll do reflections first. Did y'all have questions? Why it spoke on behalf of the class and said there were no questions? No? All right, reflections. We can reflect. Oh, yeah. <sighs> the other kids did not agree. He got tagged. Okay. <laughs> he lost. Reflections. We can reflect over X or over Y over the axis itself. So let's talk about what it looks like. I'm just hand much. But I was looking for Sullivan while I was waving to see if she's back. She must be like roasting the coffee beans or something. Definitely not going to bring the You can't really mess up a carrot. And you just push the button. If this is my graph, what is the equation of this function, by the way? Absolute value of x. If I reflect that over the x-axis, that's just like a mirror sitting there on the x-axis, and it would flip right over. So the reflection would look like that. And what happens is, remember these points, this was 1, 1, this was negative 1, 1. These points now become 1, negative 1, we'll come back, maybe come back, and we'll pretend like that's on that, negative 1, negative 1. Flip it for you. Yes, and we're going to talk. Yep, yep. So I want you to notice what it's doing. The x, the x values are staying the same. The y values are becoming opposite. So on your little cheat sheet, when you reflect over x, and I think this might be down at the bottom, when you reflect over x, you do. You keep x the same and you negate the y. Thank you so much. Oh, what did you do here? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thank you. All right. What's what? An arrow. Yeah. This is just straight off your sheet here. So I, I literally just keep X the same and negate every Y. No matter what the function is, no matter where it is, that's all I have to do to flip it over the X axis. Does that make sense? It's the opposite of what you think. Notice that. Reflection over X negates Y. Y'all okay there? Y'all remember this? Okay. Yeah. You didn't turn any? <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. And that's true for any reflection, no matter where you are. Um, If I was, let's say this was my parabola, and this point was 0, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 2. If I want to reflect that over the x-axis, I literally just take every point that's there, keep x the same, and negate y. So this would become 0, negative 1, this would become 1, negative 2, and this point would become negative 1, negative 2. Huh? Opposite. If it's positive, make it negative. If it's negative, make it positive. 
These two are reflections of each other over the x-axis. The only thing that's... The, it does. The y is the one that changes. If I reflect, y'all got that. If I reflect over the y axis, okay, well, here's why reflection over the y axis with the functions we've been talking about is a little strange. Actually, you can probably tell me why. This is called reflection. We haven't got to the stretches. The stretches and the strengths are the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, hold on. Yeah. So he's gone the whole time. So Tuesday, so Monday, I think it's that. Mm. Okay, try it now. Refresh and try now. Yeah, I guess that's true. We're doing some now. Ah, uh, well. Thank you. All right, reflect over y-axis. Here's why the reflect over y for the functions that we're using is a little not relevant. If I reflect this over y, it's already symmetric about the y-axis, so it's not doing anything. It would be itself, right? Does that make sense to you? So in order to reflect it over y, I need to move it first. So maybe I move it over. Let's say this is my graph. Yeah, you don't have to. Or you can if you want to. I thought you might. Um, one, two. Let's say I took this parabola. By the way, what's the equation of this parabola? So y equals x. How'd you know? What'd you do? It slid right to an up one, right? Also, this is vertex form. And because my second point here is just up one over one, there's not any shrinks or stretches, and we hadn't talked about that. Okay, so let's say I want to reflect this. Okay, so I want to take this parabola and reflect it over the y-axis. So if you look at your little cheat sheet, to reflect over the y-axis, this time I negate x and keep y the same. Well, what does that mean? That means the point 1, 2 becomes what? Negative one, two. That's so nice. Where I put them? Negative one, two. Yes. And the point two one becomes what? Negative two, one. And the point three two becomes negative three. And when I connect them, all of a sudden, I have a reflection over the y-axis. Does that make sense to everybody? Reflections are pretty easy. The hardest thing to remember about reflections is that if you're reflecting over x, you change y. And if you're reflecting over y, you change x. Feel good? Um, let's say... Let's do one over here. Next Friday. Oh, that probably Tuesday. What's the equation of this 
Oh, wait. I need to make it point up. Y'all haven't learned that yet. Sorry. I mean, you have, but this is not. Okay. It's not, but you can move it. You can slide it. Your, your parent graph, your y value, this is still not going to cause. Let me show you. Give me the equation. If this was slid, give me the equation of this one. Four. Negative four, negative two. Min uh, plus four, minus two. All my y's are still going to be positive. It's flipping because it shifted it. Because it shifted it down too. It's essentially shifted that axis down too. Is, is what you have to think about. So that's when it flips it up. It's still going to make sure that there's no negative y. I know, that's a little confusing. You shift after you do that reflection. All right, so now if I want to reflect this over the y-axis, y-axis means I negate which one? Reflect y means negate x. That's exactly right. So negative 3, 1 becomes what? 3, negative 1. Will, you are on it today. Right? And then negative 4, negative 2 becomes positive 4, negative 2. And negative 3, negative 1 becomes, I mean, negative 5, negative 1, sorry. 5, negative 1. That's all you do for reflection. If you're reflecting over x, you change y. If you're reflecting over y, you change x. Okay, go with me. Y'all ready for the hard stuff? Ready or not. These are sometimes called dilations. I like to call them shrinks and stretches. I know. They're the hardest. They really are. I think I even put them. Depends on if you're talking about horizontal or vertical. Let me do a couple of these combined. Take an absolute value before we do those. This is like number 22 in your packet. Take an absolute value function, shift it down 4, and write 5. I want you to give me the equation, the graph, and then we'll do the domain and range. Yeah, I have to write the equation. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. So this is number 11. So we insert it in your packet. So that, I mean, no, 22. So it's quite day. So you don't have to do it um, in your packet. It's a much better day than yesterday. I had a day yesterday. Yesterday was a day. Every day is a great day. That's right. You can if you want to, if it helps you to graph the parent, graph the parent. Yes, let's, okay, yeah. Yeah, we have. I don't know why this one doesn't have a reflection in it, but it should, because that's what we're talking about. Dilations. Think about whenever you go to the eye doctor and they put that, Stuff in your eye that dilates your eyes. Uh -uh. What's the equation? So this is the basic. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. 
and then up one over one on both. What if I wanted to take this equation? <gasps> I, I, my brain is going ahead to what I was fixing to have you do, and I went ahead and graphed it over there anyway. I'm so I was fixing to have you reflect it across the line, and I, my brain just graphed it over there anyway. Um, all right, so here, for this particular one, we'll finish this the way that it is in the packet so you have it, so don't do one more thing with it. What is the domain here? Name infinity to infinity. What's the range? That's exactly right. The range, bless you, negative 4 to infinity. Yeah. I like the transformations better than the other stuff. But. Um, so this point we said was 5, negative 4. So that would be 6, negative 3, and 4, negative 4. What would the equation look like? What would the equation look like if I reflected it over the x-axis? So we haven't talked a whole lot about, not x-axis. Okay, b before you do the points, give me the equation. How do I know it's being flipped? What's going on? So look at your... Reflection over y-axis. And what does it tell you to do? That's exactly right. So if you look, it says reflection over the y-axis, you change the x. Every x becomes negative. So I take this same equation and I would say f of x equals negative x minus 5 minus 4. That's going to give me a reflection over x. I mean, over y. Gosh, why do I keep saying that? Over y. Over y, over y, over y. If I want to go over x, that's when I'm going to do, it becomes, you put the negative out in front. Okay, that's the one you're the most used to. Think about that parabola. If it was a positive A, it opened up. If it was a negative A, it opened down. The reason it opened down was that was a reflection over Y, over X. You don't want to change. The phi is not going to change because it's still shifted. What's the only thing that's going to change is the sign on the X. Now, this is just a side note of how, because I hadn't talked to you about the equations yet. You can't distribute that through the absolute value sign. Because you'd have to do the absolute value first, and then you'd have to do the reflection. All right, are y'all okay? This, this is simplified. You can't simplify these equations any further. Does that make sense to you? Could you reflect it over both? Could you reflect it over the X and the Y? You sure could. You could put both in there. And then both coordinates are going to negate. In other words, this would be negative 6, positive 3. This would be negative 5, positive 4. This would be negative 4, positive 3. If you reflect over Y, you negate X. If you reflect over X, you negate Y. So y is considered f of x, right? So if I reflect over the x-axis, I throw the negative sign in front of the whole equation. If I reflect, huh? That's if you reflect over x. If you reflect over y, I put make the x negative. That's right. So a little bit different as you look at it as compared to an equation in a graph.
All right, y'all, let's do strength and stretches. I'm so nervous about this. Reflections. Well, technically, we've done it a little bit, so. All right, here we go. Let's talk first about what it looks like, and then we'll talk about how we actually do it. Now, remember, everything can be vertically or horizontally, right? Let's think in terms, I'm going to use a parabola as an example. If I vertically shrink something, think about that y-axis. If I shrink that y-axis in, what's happening to the graph? It's smushing out. Think about like, I don't know, like an Oreo or something. If you smushed it, the middle's going to come out the sides, right? Same thing with the graph. If you smush it in this way, it doesn't have any choice but to go out. So it's going to become wider if I'm thinking about... So instead of something like this, if I'm talking about a parabola, it starts to widen up something like that. This is a reflection over X. Yeah. Yeah. A vertical stretch is the opposite of what you think it would do. Think about if that if that y-axis was a rubber band and you could stretch it out. If you stretch it out this way, it's shrinking my graph in horizontally, right? So my graph is getting skinnier. So my parabola might start to look something like this. These happen, these are my A that's in front of my equation, okay? Remember I have, sometimes I have this equation that has the A stuck in front. Remember my A with parabolas? And we really already talked about this. As A gets bigger, the graph gets skinnier, and as A gets smaller, the graph gets wider, right? We talked about that. We did the absolute, y'all don't remember that with the quadratic? I don't believe you. All right, this is on your cheat sheet. You'll get to use it probably for the first quiz, not for the test, but probably for the quiz. All right, after you finish this project, you should be good with transformation. We look at the absolute value of A, okay? If that is, if that is greater than one, it's a stretch. Remember, we're still talking about vertical. And if this is between 0 and 1, I guess I could just say less. Since I'm absolutely right. Okay. If I had f of x equals one half x squared, this is a vertical shrink of one half. That was, yes, of two. Okay. Because that. This, this is still a vertical shrink of a half, but in it, it also has a reflection Did you? It's also a reflection over x. The negative has nothing to do with shrinks or stretches and everything to do with reflection. So that's why it's the absolute value. I don't want you to look at the negative. 
The number in front of the whole equation, okay? Now, this, because this is different, and this is where everybody, this is why strength construction is so hard. This is not the same as this. They're both dilations of their own sort or compression. This is vertical. This is horizontal. And we're going to talk about horizontal in just a minute. But whenever I say hook to the X or put in front of the whole equation, this is in front of the whole equation. This one is hooked to the X. It's kind of like whenever we did the shifts, right? This is not the same as this. This is horizontal because it's hooked to the X. This is vertical. Yeah. All right. So there's vertical, horizontal. Notice we haven't even gotten to how we're going to find these points yet. Because right now I want you to be able to recognize. The other quite confusing part. The other quite confusing part is a vertical stretch could be thought of, if you think about it, think about if you stretch that axis out, that could be the same as doing a horizontal shrink, right? Does that make sense? If I smush the sides in, that would do the same thing as stretching the up and down out. So sometimes you could rewrite horizontal as vertical or vertical as horizontal, but they're just opposites of each other. You can still express them, and I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yes, that is correct. Right. Correct. So think about those axes again, right? If I stretch out vertically, my, my parabola is getting skinnier, right? Well, what happens if I smush the sides in and do a horizontal shrink and shrink in my sides? It's going to do the same thing to the graph, right? Doing this and doing this is going to do the same thing. So a horizontal stretch could be expressed as a vertical shrink, only because sometimes it's hard to do. Because I'm, I start getting into foiling and everything else that I'd have to do. And a horizontal shrink could be expressed as a vertical stretch. I told them this was a bad day to notice. When they said I wasn't going to be here Friday. Yes, I'm fixing Yeah. All right. So here's where this one's different, right? This one has to be hooked to X. Everything horizontal is hooked to X. So if we think about this parent function, it's easiest to see with X squared or the absolute value of X. I have this A that could sit inside like this. Okay. We say if f of x, this would be f of ax. Your A, so that's the value that I'm looking at right now, okay? If A, again, I'm going to talk about the absolute value of A. Because if the A hooked to X is negative, that's a reflection over Y. What happens if X is negative? Y is reflected over Y. I know this is confusing, but hopefully when we put it all together, it'll make a little more sense. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to let you take a frame break. Then we're going to do a few all together. If the absolute value of A is greater than zero, this is why you have a cheat sheet. Greater than one, I'm sorry. This is why you have a cheat sheet, too. Horizontal is always opposite. So 
So if A, <laughs> if A is bigger than one, it's a horizontal shrink. If A is less than one, it's a horizontal stretch. So again, if I'm thinking about that parabola, a horizontal shrink actually means I'm getting skinnier, and a horizontal stretch actually means I'm getting wider. Let me give you a couple things. You tell me what they are, and then let's see. First of all, is it horizontal or vertical? Vertical. It's not hooked to the end. It's literally not touching the end. Okay. So it's vertical. That tells me it's vertical. Is it a shrink or stretch? Shrink. Vertical is what it is. So this is a vertical shrink of one half. Right. I told you, I feel like if we do a few examples, it'll make a little more sense. Horizontal, because this time, touching the X, right? It's mush up. Horizontal stretch. Now, here's where. No, it's opposite. It's opposite. Shrink, sorry. All right, well, I was so excited you got the horizontal part. Horizontal shrink, but now I can't say it's a shrink of three because that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to use a shrink of three. So I have to flip it. So I have to say it's a horizontal shrink of one third. This always flips for horizontal. That's only for horizontal. Everything horizontal is opposite, and that's like that all the way through. Your left, your right. The fraction, it's still a fraction, you just flip it. You just flip. Okay, that's your shrink or stretch factor, is what we call that. Vertical. With it. There's no parentheses there with it. Okay, so look, this and this, order of operations say do what first? Multiply or exponent? Exponent. So it's not hooked right to the X. There's another operation coming first. This one is hooked to the X. That's why this one's vertical. Vertical shrink or stretch? Shrink. Which part? Okay, but they're not the same thing because this one, if I simplified this one, right, because I'm multiplying here, so this would be like 2 thirds x times 2 thirds x, which is 4 ninths x. This is now a vertical shrink. Right? Now you can see the vertical shrink in it. Does that make sense? Okay. They are the same thing, but by different factors. So if I'm looking at it vertically, so in order to write this as a vertical, 
I'm going to lose you if I try to explain that. You have to do the square root of two thirds. Yes. It could. Vertical stretch of five. This is a vertical stretch of five. This is a horizontal shrink of one six. But in this case, they're actually the same thing. They're doing the same thing. And stretches, but everything horizontal. Okay, are y'all okay so far? Everything horizontal flips. Okay, y'all take a break, take a lap, do something before we put them all together, and I'll talk about your project. Write me an absolute. <laughs> Let's see if you can do this. If you can do this, we'll move on. Write the equation. Right? You're right. You're right about the three. But what are you doing with it? Absolute. <laughs> Absolute value. Horizontal shrink of a third. Absolute value. What am I going to do? What goes inside? That's exactly right. I'm sorry. I said write an absolute value equation. <laughs> this is number 36, by the way. I'm trying to do ones. I'm trying to do ones from your homework, so because y'all said you had a lot to do. Yeah. Oh, never mind. That was a lot to do. What do you have to do? Yeah. I might just turn that one second. All right. So, look, let's talk about the hard part here using this one as, as an example. You look at your cheat codes over there on the right of your little cheat sheet. You've got horizontal and vertical, but they're the same. So look at, I'm at the bottom on horizontal. It says that xy becomes x divided by a, but y stays the same. Yes. Okay. My a in this case is 3. So let's think about this. That means my parent graph starts 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, right? Now I need to do 3x. So my a is 3, and I know it's horizontal, right? So every y stays the same, but my x's all get divided by whatever this number is in front of me. So that's 3. So this point becomes... 1, 1 becomes 1 third 1 divided by that A. 0, 0 becomes 0 divided by 3 is still 0. And negative 1, 1 becomes what? You tell me. Negative 1 third 1. So let's graph it and see what it looks like. One third one zero zero negative one third one. Does the green one look like a horizontal shrink? Does it look like someone took the x axis and smushed it in? Yes, that's how I know I did it right. I'll probably run I'll probably run y'all some on some fluorescent paper. No, I have a letter. Huh? No worries. No worries. Just estimate. It doesn't have to be the same. 
Hey. What's the name? I, I mean, I got one down in the, the library. I don't have one. Miss Fulton has one. All real numbers. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. This one now. Yes, yeah, so let's look at 35. Well, what's the range here? We said domain was all real numbers or negative infinity of infinity. What's the range? That's right. So that's 36 done for you. Notice we're doing problems for you from your homework. 35. So we're going back one, I apologize. Quadratic function, vertical stretch of four. Okay. What's my equation look like here? You're exactly right. No parentheses, no anything, throw it in the front and be done with it. Hook to the X would be like this. That's a horizontal. You literally, if it's vertical, you literally just throw it in front of the equation. If it's horizontal, you have to start working with parentheses or grouping signs. Vertical or the easiest? Yep. In front of the equation, yep. Even if it's a shrink, if it was a vertical shrink of a half, you do one half x squared. You just throw it in front. Right. No, 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 no. They go. If it tells you in the beginning right now, that's okay. That's all right. All right, look at my vertical. Vertical is also the easiest to calculate the points. It says take your original point, keep x the same, but multiply every y by your stretch or shrink factor. So if my parent, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, here's my parent. So I have negative 1, 1, I have 0, 0, and I have 1, 1. What does negative 1, 1 become? Your A is 4, so you multiply the Y by 4. So negative 1, 4. What does 0, 0 become? What does 1, 1 become? You don't have to graph the parent now. Does this look like a vertical stretch? Does it look like if you pull the y-axis and stretch it out, is that what looks like it happens? What's the domain? What's the range? There you go. The hardest part. Yeah. With multiple transformations. Yes. Um, I don't think I included that on here. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, we'll save combinations for we'll save combinations for next week. Combinations. So we'll stop at 36 on here this weekend. So through 36. But that only leaves that only leaves like eight for the next week. Now, if you understand so that the only part that showed was between these two values. So if this was 2 and this was 5, maybe I'd say that my domain restriction is between 2 
and 5 for x. So that when you graph it, the point is, if you give me your list of equations and I literally take out Desmos or a calculator and I put this in, when I put all 20 of your equations in, I should get the same picture that you're turning into. Yours will just be colored and pretty, but I should still get the same lines. So you're going to restrict the domains here, and you're, what you're essentially doing is making a huge piecewise graph. If you want to do it like this, or if you want to say 2 is between 2 and 5 is two values of x, x is between those values, you 